tutorial we're going to be following on from the last session where we looked at financial tools and now look at financial records. We need to have an understanding as to why we need to keep financial records and then the different methods that we can use to do so. First of all, I want to highlight to you the difference between projected and actual income. Now we can use financial tools to calculate both of these, but it's important that you have an understanding of the differences between them. Projected is basically another word for predicted, and actual, well, that's just real life. So when we talk about projected versus actual income, we're talking about our predictions on our income versus what actually comes in. As part of the business planning process, you would predict how much money you think you could make as an income. This would give you a good understanding as to how viable your business would be, contrasting against the cost of the business. If you didn't make these predictions, you would have no idea as to whether or not the business could run at a profit or ultimately run at a loss. So we can use different tools to help us project these figures and we can use effectively the same tools to keep a record of our actual income as well. It's good business practice as well to compare our actual income against our projected. For example, by periodically just comparing the figures. It may be that our actual income, surprisingly, is more than we even predicted. This would be a good indication that the business is doing really well. If our actual income drops below what we predicted, this might be an indicator that things aren't quite going as planned and then measures might need to be put in place to improve the business. So what do we need to actually include when we're keeping financial records? And why is it important to do this? Maintaining accurate records helps us to make predictions for the business. We're able to get an idea as to what the finances look like now and in the future. And this might be necessary for future plans in terms of expanding the business. It also helps us to monitor our expenditure. We need to know if we're overexpending, as this could cause problems in terms of debt and ultimately run the business into the ground. Maintaining these records helps to give anyone a snapshot of how well the business is doing. It may be that you want to sell the business to someone else and the income records would give a good indicator to a potential buyer as to how well your business is doing. And then from a legal perspective, you'll need to keep financial records for tax purposes. Once your business is earning over a certain amount, you'll need to pay a percentage in taxes and your financial records will be the tool that helps you do this. So what do these financial records need to look like? Well, there are some fundamentals, but actually just like with everything else with business, there's no one way of doing things and there's no right or wrong way. Ultimately, you need to keep a record of everything that's coming in and everything that's going out financially. This will then give you an indicator each month as to how well your business is doing. By using that formula from last session, if you take away the outgoings from the income, you'll know what your profit is or your potential loss. Most people keep records like this on a month by month basis. Some months might run better than others. Some months might run at a loss, but then this might be compensated in other months when you run at a profit. Just because a business does poorly in one month, according to financial records, it doesn't mean they're actually going to fail as a business. So how can we actually keep these records? There's three main ways that people choose to keep financial records. The first is handwritten records, the longest standard method. This is literally pen to paper and handwriting and documenting the costs as you go. Now, the negative of handwritten notes is that it can be quite labour intensive, especially if you're having to create a table or spreadsheet by hand each time. It can also cause problems if you lose your records. Generally speaking, you'll have one copy because it's a hard copy. So if anything happens to that paper record, you've lost your financial records. There's no real cost associated with this type of record keeping. It is effectively the cost of a notebook and a pen. But it tends to be something that new entrepreneurs might start off doing in the initial stages of business and then move to a different form of record keeping. One of those ways is electronic record keeping. It makes sense to run your business entirely from a device 
and so therefore keeping your record keeping on your laptop with everything else that you're working from is a good idea. It also means you can back up your files and then have alternatives if you lose a file, unlike with the paper records. There are also lots of software programs that help you to complete these tasks even more efficiently. So for example, spreadsheets with calculations in them that will work out your total costs for you. This ensures higher levels of accuracy too. Most people find that once they've established a spreadsheet electronically, it's much more time efficient than handwritten notes. It also makes it easier for them to make their records accessible to anyone who needs them, for example, an accountant who might be helping with their taxes. Nowadays, there are even more software and apps coming onto the market to make it even more efficient and easier for you to keep and maintain financial records. You can download apps to your devices so that as well as keeping your records, you're able to perform tasks such as photographing receipts as you go along and attaching them within your records. So this is a step up from electronic filing and just makes everything so much more succinct and tidy. Everything's together. And so when you need your records, especially for tax purposes, everything is all in one place, including your evidence. Some of these apps attract a small monthly fee, so you need to pay for this service. However, the time it potentially saves you in terms of collating evidence and paperwork probably far outweighs the cost of the app.